It's got down to a spot that I haven't fished much. You can see behind me the sea's working nicely. We came down to try for a cracker and unfortunately uh, couldn't find any red bait. We've got some frozen sand prawns and I've based it up here with some well, double hook here of prawn goulash. So let's just see if we can pick up a little cracker or a nice black salt or something and then we can put it in the pan and show you guys how to cook it. I've got Daniel with me. He's going to um, see if he can beat me this afternoon. Yeah, fun. Daniel, just film me. Daniel's got a nice little black tail here, which you'll put on the bar. We've got another one earlier on, so we'll put the two together and we can have a little snack there. Back to all, yeah. And we'll on the grill a bit later. It's on back to all. Two each, so it's more than enough. Good day. Four nice back to all, yeah. Not bad for an evening session. And uh, enough for the family. Okay, we're back in the kitchen and I'm going to show you how to prepare the black tail. We're going to start off with filleting them and then I'm going to go over and show you how to pan fry and we're going to do a little, um, I won't say Moroccan theme, but uh, a little couscous vibe with it just to make it a little bit more interesting than just having some bright spice or garlic salt put on it and fried in the pan. So I'm going to start off by just showing you how to fillet these fish. They're not massive, uh, they don't have a lot of meat on them, but I'd rather be keeping a smaller black tail than a breeding size cob or steambrus or one of those fish. So it's a it's it's a very nice table fish. Um, often now in winter time we get a lot of them. So let's quickly show you how to just bring your knife through the belly, down through the belly and then along the back. Not pushing too hard so that you actually go so you go through the bone and along the bone. Just guide your knife along the bone. Come in this side. Lift and fill it up. You're going through a little bit of the rib cage. And then underneath that, just get your blade under. And the fillet comes off really nicely. That's it, and that should be a pretty bonus. You'll have a few bones that go along here. All you need to do is just run your knife gently along the edge of the bones, open them up, and on this side again. There's one rib cage bone that I caught. So, I'm just... It does tend to waste a lot of meat, but unfortunately, filleting fish is not the most economical way of using a fish up. I'm not a fan of bones at all. We go along there. Knife 
down. And then you've got a really nice little fillet. That's that one there, and get the next one. get the bones out. These you can get from probably Yappy Chef or any good catering shop and it's used for pin boning so you can grab the bones a lot easier once the bone the fish has been skinned otherwise the bones tend to stick to the to the skin and uh, it's perfect for helping to reduce the waste on fillet when you uh, pin boning them and it also doesn't destroy the fillet. The next step is to season the fillets and then we're going to get them into some hot oil. I'm going to show you how to make a... I've got some couscous here, show you how to quickly prepare some couscous and then we're going to make a little salad with the ingredients and just get some flavors into the couscous. So one of the most important things with fish is to keep the moisture in. That's why you use a hot pan. Uh, one of the good ways of keeping it in is to coat it in flour. That forms a crust around it and when you fry it, it also gives it some nice texture and just adds to the whole color and everything. It's uh, really, really good to, to dust it in some flour or some polenta. So I've got a couple of spices here. You can either use the, this is a lemon and herb spice. I've got chicken on here, but it can be used for fish. I've got some exotic thyme. If you want just some plain black pepper with some Himalayan salt. And what you do is just dust the fish first. I'm just going to do one, one of each. Both sides, give it a nice seasoning. A little bit of pepper. And then into the flour. Just want to coat it nicely with some flour. Pan on. Put our oil into the pan. We're going to just do a bit of shallow frying. You're not going to have too much oil. Just enough to coat the bottom of the pan. Just wait until that gets nice and hot. And once it's nice and hot, go in with the fish. Alright, into the flour. I think that oil should be reasonably hot. I'm going to just make sure that it sizzles when it goes in. Otherwise it's not hot enough. Dust off your extra, excess flour. And then just place it away from you. Give those a couple of minutes and they should be good to go. Get some paper towel. Ready for when they come out of the pan. Okay, it's been in the pan for about two or three minutes and uh, ready to turn. You can see when it gets a nice golden color on the other side. Give it another two minutes on that side. Cooks very, very quickly. And while that's cooking, I'm just going to quickly go and show you how to do the couscous. For the couscous, we're going to just have a little bit of couscous in the, in the base here. Get a bit of olive oil. And before you make your couscous, add about a tablespoon of olive oil to the mixture. You just want to fold the olive oil through the dry mixture. And what this does is it stops your couscous from clumping or sticking together. And then we're going to season it up quickly with, I'm just going to use some butter chicken masala. This can be used to coat your fish or to season up anything that you'd like. It's just a curry paste. I'm going to put a nice whopping of a big sized teaspoon in there. 
and then to that I'm just going to add some boiling water. I'm going to cover the couscous, it's about 1.2 parts water to 1 part couscous. And then I'm going to add some of this ball chutney. So we've got a bit of sweet and sour going on, there's a bit of vinegar and some sugar in the this is balls chutney, about two tablespoons of that. And you've got aromatics coming from your curry powder. Mix it through nicely. And then that can just rest for a couple of minutes. Probably you need about maybe 10, 15 minutes. Fish is ready to take it off. And so let's get it off the pan. Real nice colour on that. Otherwise, those are draining, we can go in with the next couple. When your pan starts getting too hot, just turn the temperature down, otherwise, you'll end up burning, up, burning your fish. And, uh, Tastes fantastic. Got nice and crisp, yeah. And uh, that just needs a bit of fluffing up now. You can see it's started taking a bit of shape. And we're going to add, add a few things: some fresh ingredients for texture. Just chop up a couple of mushrooms. But I'm going to fry those mushrooms up as soon as the fish is done. I'm going to dice up some tomatoes. And then we're going to grab a pepper, just pack this, pack your guts out. And then a bit of fresh coriander. Nice and rough, and some lemon zest. I'm gonna just cut a bit and squeeze some lemon juice into that as well. Some nice fresh flavors for the black salt to rest on. this through Chris Chris and this will form the base for our black tail. I'm gonna pop these mushrooms into a pan quickly. A little block of butter and those will go in. Get this butter going a bit. Chris. And that's the finished dish. 